Good morning. Welcome back to Morning Manor. We're so glad that you have joined us on this, the Lord's Day. How blessed we are to be in the land of the living and to be in God's presence. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Father, we bless you today. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you are doing in our lives, and we thank you for what you are about to do as we hear your holy word. Open our hearts, open our minds to receive that which you have prepared for us through this morning manner meditation. In Jesus' holy name, we ask it all. And the saints of God said, amen. Amen to you. Listen, open your Bibles back to the book of Genesis. We are looking in the, I'm sorry, the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 3. And we started last week introducing this lesson talking about Moses. But we ask a question as a challenge to you. And the question is, can God use you to make a difference in this world? Can God use you to make a difference in this world? We talked about uh, Moses and how Moses was God's choice to lead Israel out of Egyptian bondage. Israel has been in slavery in Egypt for 430 years. God hears the cry of his children. He notices the oppression that they are going through. And God chooses Moses to be his liberator. He chooses Moses to make a difference in the world at this particular time. Again, we're going to look at Exodus chapter 3. Uh, our focal verses are verses 1 through 10. Let's pick up here again. Uh, look at verse number 7. Exodus 3, number 7. I'm going to read verses 7 through 10. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Can God use you to make a difference in the world? What an awesome question again, because uh, I, I introduced this last week and I asked you, uh, what are you doing? to make sure you are in the purpose and the plan of God. God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you. And you must get to the point where you understand you are not your own. You are not the Lone Ranger, but God has you here on this earth for a purpose. And that purpose is ultimately to give glory to the Lord. That's it. You are to give glory to the Lord. So how do you give glory? How do you bring glory to the Lord? You bring glory to the Lord by doing that which God has called you to do. Uh, we ended last week with a definition uh, that the name Moses means to, um, to pull out or draw out of water. Uh, Moses was given his name 
by the daughter of Pharaoh who found him on the banks of the river. Uh, he was put there by his sister Miriam, but Pharaoh's daughter take Moses into her home and raises him as an Egyptian. I say raise him. Uh, she hired Moses' mom to nurse him, and uh, I believe and I know for a fact that was God's plan because although Moses was raised in a strange house, he was still influenced by his mother and had a history of the Hebrew people. He was familiar with their struggling. He was familiar with their challenges. He was familiar with their oppression. God will put people in your life that will show you right from wrong. God will put people in your life who will teach you the ways of the Lord. And what better teacher could Moses have had other than his own mother who taught him the ways of God and taught him about the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So here we are in chapter 3. Moses has grown up in Pharaoh's house and he has learned uh, the ways of the Egyptians. And God was, I believe, God was preparing Moses to make a difference in the world. Now, be mindful of this fact. Be mindful of the fact that you too, you too, you can also be used of God to make a difference in this world. Yes, you can. You, you have to know something. Uh, I think you need to understand if you're going to be used by God, how have you prepared yourself to be used by God to be a change agent? How have you prepared yourself to be used by God to be a change agent? Uh, you have gone through what you've gone through you have lived through what you've lived through. You have trained yourself. You may think that your training is for a secular purpose, and it, perhaps it is, but ultimately, you are who you are, and you've been given what you have because God has a divine purpose for you. Never underestimate what God can do through human personality. Let me repeat that. Never underestimate. Never underestimate what God can do through human personality. Never underestimate what God can do through you. Listen, it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what side of the track you've grown up on. God can still use you. As Moses grew up, if you look at chapter 3, uh, one day Moses saw uh, an Egyptian who was beating up on a Hebrew. Moses thought no one seen what was happening. Moses killed the Egyptian in favor of the Hebrew. So one day Moses walking around, he thought that what he had done was unknown. And uh, it was brought to his attention to Hebrews were fighting. And they said, hey, Moses, you're going to kill us just like you killed the, uh, the Egyptian? Wow. Moses realizes uh, what I've done has been uh, made known. I need to get out of here. Moses fled for his life. And he ended up in the land of Midian. While in Midian, now at this point when he left Egypt, Moses was 40 years old. And he had to start over. But I believe what we call a restart or a reboot or a reset is all in God's plan if we trust in God. Moses ends up in Midian. Uh, he meets the priest of Midian by the name of Jethro. And Moses uh, marries the daughter of Jethro. And Moses has the job of tending to his father-in-law's sheep. Moses, trained to be a king, is now a sheep herder. 
He's a sheep rancher. But yet, in the midst of all of that, God's plan was still working. Maybe you have not reached your goals in life. Maybe you feel that life is passing you by. You will never get to the place that you know God has promised you. I want to tell you to keep trusting in God, keep believing in God, and don't let the dream that God put inside of you, do not let that dream die because God knows what he is doing. Moses is in Midian and Moses, this is awesome, Moses stays in Midian 40 years. He leaves Egypt at the age of 40, and now he's in Egypt 40 years, I mean in Midian, 40 years as a sheep herder. He's married, he has children, and he's happy doing what he's doing. But God has other plans. Let me, let me say this. Um, when God has a purpose for your life, God will use you for that purpose when the time is right. Maybe you have not accomplished the goals you've set in life because it is not time yet. But I do notice in due season, God will let your desires come to pass when you make yourself available to, to him. Um, your, your, your purpose will not unfold before the right time. Your life moves according to God's will. Listen, your life moves according to God's will. If you say, I had a dream in my life, I was going to make a difference in this world, and I can't see the difference being made now, just hold on. In God's timing, it shall come to pass. Be patient. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. David said, wait, I say on the Lord. And so it's all about God revealing his plan to you in the fullness of time. All you need to do, again, is trust in the Lord, wait on the Lord. So in the meantime, while Moses is in Midian, the king of Egypt dies, and the children of Israel cries out to the God of heaven. They cry out because of their bondage, and uh, this is in chapter 2, verse 23, and the Lord hears their cries. God hears them. He understands their plight. He understands uh, their circumstance. And so God acknowledges what the children of Israel are going through. And God is touched by the feelings of their infirmities. Our God, listen, the Lord our God is concerned about what is happening around you, and he is concerned about what's happening to you. Let me say that again. Our God is concerned about what's happening around you, but he is also concerned about what is happening to you. And if you cry out to the Lord, if you call on the Lord and pray fervently, God will come and see about you. So we move to chapter 3. We move to chapter 3. I'll keep going back and forth, but you need to get the context of the text. In chapter 3, while Moses was minding his own business, Moses noticed a bush burning that would not be consumed. The bush burned, but the bush didn't burn up. The bush burned, but the bush didn't burn out. Have you noticed something extraordinary happening in your life or happening around your life? Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary? Maybe 
God has put that before you because God wants to get your attention and God wants to do something dynamic through you. Listen, that is our time for today. We're out of time, but we're not out of content. We'll be back next week to continue this story, this, this lesson, Can God Use You to Make a Difference in This World? God bless you, and we'll see you the next time for our morning manna.